let us see now how the Welch Sutter Twite approach for calculating the effective number of degrees of freedom works in practice. Using the effective number of degrees of freedom, we can define a coverage factor which corresponds to a predefined probability. And we will look at this on the example of the ammonium nitrogen uncertainty calculation, which we saw already previously. We calculated there the uncertainty indexes or uncertainty contributions. And we saw that there are three quantities that dominate the uncertainty, which enabled us assuming that our output quantity is normally distributed. The Welch-Shutter-Dwight approach actually also enables verifying how well this holds. I have put here the Welch-Shutter-Dwight equation. And the indexes of the input quantities that we need here, we already have. And now we need to calculate the numbers of degrees of freedom for all of these input quantities. So df, and let us now look quantity by quantity. If we look at a sample, then a sample has three uncertainty components. The most influential of them is the uncertainty due to the chemical interference. And this is a B-type uncertainty estimate. And whenever we have a B-type uncertainty estimate, we can say that the number of degrees of freedom is either infinity or at least very large. And very often, people use something like 100 or 50 for number of degrees of freedom of such quantities. So we will assume that the number of degrees of freedom of a sample is 50. Now b0 and b1, the intercept and the slope of the regression line, come from these regression data. We have here five data points. But in linear regression, the number of degrees of freedom is found from the number of data points by subtracting the number of found parameters. And in our case, there are two parameters, the slope and the intercept. 5 minus 2 is 3. So in this case, we have three uncertainty components, both for the slope and for the intercept. Now, dilution factor, its uncertainty estimate was a typical B-type uncertainty estimate, which again enables us saying that the number of degrees of freedom is very large, let's say roughly 50. And the same goes about delta CDC, which also is a B-type estimated quantity. So number of degrees of freedom is 50. Now we have to calculate the ratios of index squared versus the number of degrees of freedom. And this we will do here in this row. Index squared divided by 50. OK. So now we have all the ratios here. And now the number of effective degrees of freedom for our output quantity, we can calculate. In this cell, it is 1 divided by sum of all these ratios. And we find that the number of effective degrees of freedom in this case is 45. And in order to find now a coverage factor corresponding to 95% probability with 45 degrees of freedom, we calculate the so-called student coefficient, or t coefficient. So it is our k value at 95% probability. And this is found by the so-called TINV function, which uses as its parameters the probability, which ex expressed as 100 minus the desired probability, my, meaning 5% 
but this 5% has to be presented as a ratio, meaning not 5, but 0 0.05. And the number of degrees of freedom, of course, comes from this cell. And we see that the coverage factor corresponding to 95% probability is very similar to 2. It's actually 2.14. And this means that we are fully entitled to calculate uncertainty at k2 level and assume the normal distribution. But now here we can insert the correct rigorously calculated k value and we see that the uncertainty remains 0 0.014 just as we found previously with using k2.